Wow! Hello from Manchester! We are in Weed, California! With Siskiyou Media Council! And you know what? It's the only television station in all of the mountain of Siskiyou, California. And I have the number one show with the new day in Telos. Oh, my phone is ringing. <laughs> Hello? Oh, hey, how you doing? Yeah, well, uh, you're call calling at the wrong time. I'm right in the middle of a TV show. No, I'm not watching a TV show. I'm doing a TV show. Yeah, SiskiyouMediaCouncil.org. Check it out, dude. Okay, well, thanks for calling. Why are you calling? Oh, to wish me a happy birthday. Oh, that's so sweet. Thank you, sir. Hi, right, bye-bye. Hey, excuse me there. Uh, I am Arthur Aday, and I have this beautiful, beautiful place to do the TV shows of a day in Telos. Actually, we're calling it the new a day in Telos. And that's because I took a break, got cancer somehow, and I am, now I'm well. So I'm in remission and I'm here to do another show just for you folks. Hey, my audience is small today, but they've been laughing all, all afternoon about different things that I say. <laughs> I just want to say to you that I have the staff See? <laughs> I got the world by the hand here. Woo! <laughs> ah, don't hit me hard. You know, one day I was at, at home when I was a young kid, and this guy next door brought this staff over to me. And if you look at it really close, it's one solid piece of wood that's been, been uh, put together. I call this my knobby knee knocker. <laughs> if you mess with me, I got the knee, choom, knock you down. All right, hey, it's my birthday party. And I wanna show you some of the cute little bur pieces here. This is the best one here. It says, uh, it's got a dog in the front. I don't know how they got his ears up like that, but it says, yanks, you're how old? And it says inside, it's that, uh, is that in dog years? Dog years? <laughs> years, oh, dog years. Hey, it's doggy years. So I, I, we were talking about it, and it's um, seven, seven years to every, every one year. And so that makes a dog pretty old when they pass away. I know I had a dog for 12 years, and then he, when he passed away, so that's seven times 12. Uh, and uh, I'm not gonna sit here and try and figure that out. All right, here's another one. <clears throat> it's not how old you are, but the number of years you've made the world a better place. Woo, Yay! all right. You know, I, I think about this, and uh, I really thank uh, Cassandra and John for that because this is actually something that I've been trying to do for, you know, since I started in 2004, how to influence the population. And hopefully, in a good way, I've influenced a lot of people about my show, about Mount Shasta, uh, things that they're spraying in the air, weather modification, you should see that one. Go to siskiyoumediacouncil.org and in the archives you'll find uh, our skies. That's really important to look at. Here's another one. All these little candles running around. Make it a blowout happy birthday! Woo! Yeah, we're blowing it out. And that was from... Uh, jo uh, jo uh, Joseph uh, Lucky. Lucky man he is. Boy, I tell you. He's been doing some movies and things like that. So he knows what's happening around here. And he gave me this nice little gift card from Ray's. You know what? I'm going to use it to pick up some water. 
Water is so important. If you're drinking low pH water or no pH water, if your water is a tap water, you should always check it to see what the pH is. Because if it's in an acidic level, so zero to seven is acidic. The lower it is, the worse the water will be. Well, I was drinking the headwaters during the summer, and when I saw this sign, it says this water has not been approved for drinking. Drink at your own risk. I said, whoa, when that sign went up, when did it go up? I have no real idea, but I think in 2014 it probably went up. But anyway, I tested it, and it was a four. Can you believe that? I, I couldn't believe it. It's supposed to be holy water. Holy water would be up in the pH somewhere. Well, we just tested it. If you saw my first show, we did a test, and it's a seven. So I'm thinking that seven is better than four any day, but you're going to add a little... Um, uh, baking soda or magnesium. I like magnesium, and it'll bring it up into a pH uh, factor. Now, why am I so on to do this? Because the headwaters out of four gave me uh, help. Help give me um, uh, leukemia. And what it does is it brings your your white cells down into a zero area. And that's easy for any disease to come in and, and wipe you out. Well, because I did the CBD oil, and when I found out that the water was what was causing it, um, the, the leukemia or causing my white cells to go really low, I changed it to a pH water. Uh, I didn't bring my pH water with me, but I just want to let you know, an 8 pH or is it probably about your best because the uh, uh, blood is a 7.3 to a 7.6 on the pH. So make sure you're drinking a, a water that has pH in it, which is alkali, which is the water is alive at that point. Some of them have uh, negative ions in, and it really worked. That's three weeks. I was drinking a pH of 8. It's called Real 2 Water, and in three weeks... My red, my red and my white blood cells went to a normal area just in three weeks. Two quarts a day for three weeks. I still drink it. Uh, we just tested, uh, tested my uh, blood the other day, went to the doctor, and he said, actually, my creatinine, which is the dirt, is up to a 2.0, and uh, my kidney... Uh, kidneys are only at a 33 fil filter, 33 percent in filter. So uh, the doctor put me on a note that that in three months when he tested me again, if it's lower than that, I get to go and start doing what they call uh, what they call that dialysis. So hopefully, um, I'm not going to go there, but it's always that possibility. So, I've already prepared for it. I'm doing another show just for you. Hey, here we are in uh, Weed, California. And of course, I woke up one day when I was uh, in 2004 and said, what the heck am I doing in Weed, California? And I thought about it for a while. And uh, a couple of days later, I was waking up and I heard, volunteer for the TV show, community television. And I'm like, what is t going on with that? So I called them up and uh, they needed a, a, a photographer or somebody who would run a video camera. So I went down and checked in. And three months later, this guy was saying, the, the director was saying, hey Arthur, we want you to do a TV show. And I said, no, I don't, I'm not the guy in, in, the, in the front of the camera. No, don't, don't put me there. And he said, oh, come on, you can do something. <clears throat> so he was real sure that I had, you know, something for, for the community. And what happened was is I went home and I'm like, okay, God, you, well, you, you got me into this TV show. What do you want me to do? Well, the first thing I did was to start with uh, Genealogy Today, a show that really went way over the 
population. There was more people calling in and going, can you help me with my genealogy? And so there was a lot of people I ended up helping. But what I want to get to that is that when you find your king and queen in your uh, pedigree, they have their pedigree, uh, their genealogy through the Bible to Adam and Eve. Now, I thought that was pretty hilarious to think that you could get all the way back to Adam and Eve. But one day, my grandfather came to me and he said, the king to the family was beyond him. Well, I started thinking about that. The king to the family. So I started looking at all the Beatties, which is my grandmother, uh, my, my, my mother's maiden name was Beatty, but they kind of changed it to Beatty, B-A-T-Y. They took out a bunch of numbers there. But anyway, I started following it, and I came to the first uh, Beatty that came from Ireland. He married an English lady called uh, Susan Ashforby. So she has a direct descendant from, to King Edward III, which I thought was pretty cool. Anyway, I checked out his pedigree and walked it back through the Bible to Abraham and then to Noah. Uh, and they actually, somehow they had these records that went back to Adam and Eve. So I'm a royalty, brothers. I'm royal. Woo! Yeah! I am the king. I don't know king what. King Arthur. King Arthur. There you go. <coughs> Hey, you know what? This is some good coffee. <laughs> <clears throat> but I'm not here to talk about coffee. See, what am I here for? Oh, oh, is it the title of this show is uh, uh, Turkey, Bad Turkey on a Good Day. <laughs> I want to tell you about uh, my death experience. Now, this wasn't a near death. This was truly a dead experience. No, uh, I, I have some turkey about three days later, and I, I'm eating it, pie and turkey, and I'm really liking it. Well, the next day I wake up, my stomach was hurting. And I couldn't figure out what it was. And I ended up going to the hospital, and they like, you know, did all these tests. Oh, we don't know what, why your stomach hurts. Da, 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 da. Maybe you're just constipated. And I said, constipated? Oh, anyway, at 10 o'clock or a.m., I was checked in, and at 12 midnight, they checked me out. Yeah, I had to sign myself out. I looked outside, and there was snow everywhere. So I grabbed a couple of sheets. I hope they don't think I was stealing them, but I was grabbing a couple of sheets and wrapping them around me. And I'm thinking, I don't have a phone, and I don't know anybody's phone number. I'll go to a friend's house over by the um, the golf course. So me in my cave was walking down the road. And I get somewhere close to my friend's house. And my legs started giving out on me. And I, and I was like, whoa, I can't walk no more. And seriously, that was a crazy thing. I sat down. I looked up, and there was a, a street sign up there, but it was so dark I couldn't see what it was. So I was thinking, well, I can't walk no more, so I might as well just sit here and wait for that sign, to, to the light to come on and the sun to come up. Well, to tell you the truth, I don't remember anything after that, but at 6 o'clock in the morning, this guy was pulling out of his driveway, and he looked over, and he saw my body hunched over, this berm of snow. And he called 911 and, and they came and I was dead. Actually, I probably was just frozen, but I was dead. No heart sign, no brain waves. And so they took me to the hospital and, you know, they took those uh, electro stuff, what, electricity stuff, and hit you with the uh, the heartbeat, and nothing happened. So, the funny thing was, is my friends, 
my wife had said, call up a bunch of friends and said, oh, Arthur's dead, come and say goodbye. So I remember being on the outside of my body and my grandfather over here with my grandmother and my mother and my grandfather kept saying, son, you got to get into the body. You're not finished with your mission. And I, I couldn't see the body because it was all wrapped up, you know, you, you know. Uh, but my friends were coming, and some of them were crying, and some of them were saying, what, what happened to him? What happened to him? Well, my wife was there. She says, what? She says, well, they just found him frozen, dead in the snow. And uh, they don't really know what, why he would be there, other than they let him out at 12 midnight. Can you believe that? I, I, just, I, I don't know what these people were ever thinking about. Anyway, so I'm walking, walking kind of back and forth, and I sit down, and my grandfather tells me, you got to get back in your body. And I'm, I said, I can't even see the body. Where am I, where's the door to get in, you know? How do I get in the body? Well, one of my friends is a shaman, uh, uh, Alexander uh, Golden Eagle, and, and he brought himself a little, a little drum about this big, and he makes these beautiful drums anyway. But he brought this drum, and he had, you know, face powder on and his shaman head. head. I mean, he was a shaman today. So he comes up, and he says, "I'm going to do a ceremony." So he starts doing this heartbeat, and all of a sudden, I'm, uh, I'm still out here, and I'm watching. And all of a sudden, I hear this, this noise. They go, <laughs> and I, I feel myself leaving and going into my body. Well, I raised up, and I grabbed Alexander, and I gave him a big hug, and I thanked him. I said, thank you, thank you, thank you. And he pushes me away, and he goes, are you alive? And I said, am I dead? And then I heard the nurse go, hey, leave that body alone. What are you guys doing? And over here, these meters were all going off. Dee, 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 dee. And, and Alex says, I think, I think uh, you have 10 minutes to, uh, to wake up here. You know, <laughs> he says to me, he says uh, to the nurse, he says, look, I, I think he's alive. And the nurse comes walking out. Yeah, no, he's not alive. He says, you know, that's what happens to the body. They stiffen up. And, you know. He goes, no, I think he's alive. So the nurse comes over and she looks at me and I look at the nurse and I say, am I alive? <laughs> and, and she looks at me with like, oh, he's alive. <laughs> and so, so he, he, she yells for the other nurse, and, hey, we got, this guy's alive, we got to take care of him. And then she rushes off everybody. And I remember that I, I fell back down in, and I was kind of sleeping or, or whatever, trying to recuperate from being out of my body. What an experience that is. We'll go, well, I'll tell you what happened later. But anyway, so the nurses take care of me. They uh, unwrap me from this dead sheet. And, and uh, the next morning, I remember I was really cold, or whenever I woke up again, I, mean, I was really, really cold. I pulled the sheet over me, and I blew hot air from my breath into the sheet until I was warm. And then I was like, where in the heck am I? Well, when I got up, I, my legs were, weren't working. And so I had this uh, uh, walker and I like kind of walked around a little bit and I sat down in the chair across from the bed. And I was like, wow, what's going on? Where am I now? <clears throat> well, I saw the phone and all of a sudden it turned into a dove. And I was like, whoa, a message from God. What's a dove? What is a dove? A dove is the Holy Spirit. I said, oh, that's really cool. The Holy Spirit is here. Then all of a sudden, I, I looked out the window, and this police car pulls up. And this guy gets out of the passenger side, and he says, hey, you in there, put your hands up. And I'm going, oh, what for? What for? And then I looked over at the phone, and it was a phone. What happened to the dove? And then I looked back over here, and the cop car and the, and the cop was gone. I'm like, whoa, what's going on? So I make myself, I, I get back in bed, and the nurse comes in. So how you doing, Arthur? 
Um, well, and I, and I realized it was a gray rabbit following her behind her. And I go, <laughs> I said, well, you got a gray rabbit behind you. And she looked. So I, said, I don't see no rabbit. I said, well, I see a rabbit. And so she said, okay, well. And she walks out, and the rabbit walks out behind her. And we go, wow, what's going on? <clears throat> so the board, the chalkboard that they, they put people, the name on when they, when they came in, um, information, this, it moved aside, and this guy jumps out of the, out of the wall. And then I was really puzzled. I was like, whoa, I've never seen that happen before. So the guy comes up to me and he starts talking to me. Da, 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 da. It's going to be all right. It's all right. You're all right. I, oh, I got to leave. The nurse is coming. So he jumps back in, shuts the, shuts the, 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 the board. And of course, it was the nurse with the, the gray rabbit. And, yeah, How you doing? I said, you got that gray rabbit behind you. She looks again. She goes, I don't see no gray rabbit. I said, well, I see it. So she says, well, maybe I should talk to another nurse and have him come in and look at you. So she leaves, and then this guy from the wall comes out again, and he's talking, and he, then he goes back in, and then there was like my pile of clothes sitting over on a, on a table, and all of a sudden, it's, I thought it was a pumpkin at first, but all of a sudden it starts talking to me, and, and I'm listening, and he says, hey, remember that medicine? I have it in my pocket. And I said, the medicine? I said, what medicine was that? And then the nurse comes in and she says, so how are you doing? I said, I go, hmm, I'm not sure. And I, I tell her the, the, te the, the telephone was, was a dove and the cops were telling me to help put my hands up and there's a gray rabbit following the nurse. <laughs> <laughs> and she says, she said to me, well, is there anything following me? And I go, no. She says, well, is, the, is that a phone still a dove? I go, no, it's, it's just a phone. And, uh, she says, oh, you're probably hallucinating. So she comes over. She says, I'll be back in a minute. So she runs off, and she comes back with the shot. Ugh, right in the arm. Boy, did that hurt. It just knocked me out. Well, in a couple of days, I woke up again, and then my wife was there. And the doctor shows up, and they're just talking about, well, what happened and everything, and now he's alive, and da 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 Well, they let me go home with them. Whoo, boy, six months it took for me to recalibrate and realize that I had been dead, but now I'm alive. You see? I almost feel like I was resurrected in a, in a way. So if you think I'm funny or strange, it's because I was dead and now I'm alive. Woo! Yes. You know, one of the reasons I'm here in Mount Shasta is I, would, I had been ready to move out of Sacramento. And I was praying. And I said, please show me a place to go. And a couple of days after that, this was back in 2000. Yeah, 2000. And a couple of days later, I hear, I am he who is upon the mountain. Come and sup with me. And I'm like, whoa, that's pretty weird. Who would say that? And then a couple of days later, I hear, trade your limo in for horses and head for the mountain. And I thought about that. And I said, whoa, what mountain are we going to? Well, one day I got the, the feeling to go to a, a bookstore. So while I'm in the bookstore, I'm like, kind of like touching base with my inner self. And I hear, go over to the magazines. So I put my hand over these magazines. And all of a sudden, I felt this warm magazine. So I picked it up. And you know, lo and behold, what it would be having, it had a picture of Mount Shasta on it. And it said, um, directions to Mount Shasta. And I'm like, whoa, where's Mount Shasta? I had no idea where Mount Shasta was. So I, I looked through this magazine and I got to know like, like where it was and who, people that had stores and uh, different things like that. And so I said, well, I guess this is where I'm going. But I kept hearing, not yet, not here. So I went off and did my work and did that school, finished the school and then got into before I went to school, I, I went, was working. But anyway, 
I was working and everything. And I, um, oh, I was going to school, but not at that point. But anyway, this is 2000. I didn't do school until 2004. So anyway, I put two and two together. And in 2002, I drove up here and looked around at Mount Shasta. And then in 2003, I moved in with a friend. And um, the next thing I knew, I was getting married. And we were living in Weed, California. And I was told to come to the community television. So that's why I'm here, folks. I have 300 plus shows that I've been doing since 2004. And they're all on SiskiyouMediaCouncil.org. Actually, you'll only find 54 on there. But I want you to know these shows are really powerful. There's information in there, and there's some really funny ones. Check out the Healing Brothers. But <laughs> what you want to do is really check out why they're spraying us. All right, folks, they got to wrap this baby up. And I want to let you know I'm the king of talk. Yes, Weed <laughs> California. And if you haven't been in Weed California, come on up and I'll show you around. Hey, SiskiyouMediaCouncil.org on the internet or channel 15 on your cable. You know what? Bless you all because I'm still here. The devil can't get me down. Yeah! Woo! Jesus is the Lord. Yes! Woo! All right. Well, we'll see you later. Stay tuned for the next show coming up. <laughs> Have a great evening.